welcome to episode two of Dream Lab, where we delve deep into the unconscious mind through the use of sound healing meditations, various forms of art, and ways for us to delve into collective unconscious. But today, we have a beautiful, beautiful victory joining us. She will be painting on this canvas a level of her dream world. And when she goes on to the mask, she shall be painting her dream self. And at the end of the meditation, anyone who's joining us in person, we're given masks to be able to start painting themselves. And anyone who's watching at home tonight, now would be a great time to pick up some art supplies, some pens, papers. If you don't have a mask, you can just start draw, you can draw what you envision throughout the meditation. So a little bit about the process that we are doing tonight is that it takes from a level of inspiration of Carl Jung's active imagination. What we're going to do is First, start building a dream world, and then through our intuitive mind, create the character that will exist within it. Without further ado, my beautiful co host, Miko. Yeah, so I guess I'd like to add that um, anyone who's watching live, um, you're not going to have the mask to, to paint or draw, but what you can do is when we get to that portion of the show, you can just create on a blank canvas or whatever material you have. Um, but you're going to be basically creating a character from your dream or entity from your dream. Um, these are hidden and unconscious parts of ourselves that have been split off from our psyche due to societal conditioning, shame, fear, traumatic events. Uh, in this act of imagination, in this dream meditation, we go into the creative realm of our unconscious, the imaginal realm, and we try to make contact with those repressed and hidden parts of our minds. Um, and so this process of painting creation um, facilitates a bridge between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, um, bringing the unconscious contents to life, into the waking state. So we're going to begin with some music, um, then after that we're going to guide you all through a meditative visualization journey. At the end of the journey, we're going to invite you to create um, some art that will basically depict what you experienced on your journey. And then we're going to interview our wonderful artist, and then we'll close the session. But yeah, hope you all enjoy. Set the mood in your space, maybe light a candle, get into a meditative position, and uh, just relax and enjoy the journey.
into the ocean of your heart. Letting go of all expectations that you have for yourself. Letting go of the past and the future. Not through force, but through simple observation. Allowing your entire body mind to relax. To deeply relax. In the process of this meditation, we intend to deeply connect with our primordial being. To make the unconscious conscious to wholly embracing every part of ourselves. So I can invite you to close your eyes and start by focusing on sensations in the body, such as the flowing of your breath as it comes in through the nose and out through the mouth. Maybe you see a cave before you, 
maybe you're in the ocean, maybe you're in the forest, visualize your path. Throughout the process of this meditation, we'll be guiding you, but it's important to stay connected to your own intuition, to what comes up in your own mind and heart, to keep your heart open, to keep your mind open, and to follow whatever arises in your awareness, trusting that it will take you where you need to go. So you see this path before you, and it's shrouded in darkness, sitting at the foot of the path, taking it in. This is the pathway that will lead to you deep into your psyche. And the light, the orb, begins to shine a path through the darkness. You can see this path clearly. Notice what it looks like. What are the colors? What are the textures? What are the shapes and sizes? Don't try to force anything. Just allow what spontaneously and naturally occurs in your mind to arise. So you begin to follow the light, walking down the path. Keeping awareness in each step that you take. Step by step. Feeling the ground or the water. Whatever is around you. Going deeper and deeper through this path of your mind. With your guiding light. Staying connected to trust courage, knowing that it will be okay, knowing that this process of healing takes vulnerability and openness. So you begin to go further down this path, whether it's the cave, the forest, the sea. And now before you, you begin to see the outline of the door. This door is the bridge between your consciousness and your unconscious. Once you go through the door, you'll be able to access these deeply hidden and repressed parts of yourself, the parts that long for liberation and transcendence. So look at this door. Notice its size, its shape, its color, its texture. Spend some time with this door. You've seen it before. It's important. It's profound. What does it feel like to be so close to yourself? Just take note of that for a moment.
see the door again. And now you notice that there's a lock on the door. The key to this lock is inside your heart. But the only way to access this key is to let go of your ego and your mind. The mind, the intellect, is the bouncer of the heart. It blocks us from feeling. It stops us from being ourselves fully. So in order to access this key, we must surrender the mind into the heart. Do this now. Let go of anything you're still holding on to. You have your guiding light with you. Place your trust in your higher self and watch as your mind begins to sink to the ocean of your heart.
All of these things are behind this door. And you feel this as you begin to turn the key, unlock the lock, hearing the click, the door's unlocked. On its own, without you even having to do anything, the door begins to slowly open. Creaking open, slowly.
have any questions, feel free to ask. This is a reservoir of secrets. Things about your own mind. So when you come into contact with this character, try to understand deeply who they are, what they are. It's a part of you that's split off. So this is the process of reintegration, reconnection. So embrace this avatar in whatever manner feels right. Maybe you want to give them a hug. Maybe you just want to sit in meditation with them, looking into each other's eyes. Perhaps the question, what do you desire? What do you long for? What have you been holding on to? Do you feel safe? Do you feel loved? Do you feel secure? How can I make you feel secure and loved? What do you need from me? What do you need from me? What are you here to tell me? What are you here to tell me? Step by step, rising back into consciousness. 
consciousness.
Taking a deep breath, deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Into, the nose, into the nose, out through the mouth. Through the mouth, through the mouth. Make this a Make conscious, this breath. conscious breath. Feel the beauty Feel in the simple beauty, act, of simple breathing, act of, breathing, of breathing, the autonomous, the autonomous process, 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 the contrast the between, 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 between how much effort how much we constantly effort exert, we constantly exert day, to day, day to day. The breath is so breath effortless. Is so effortless. You don't even have to do anything. To do anything. It, automatically it automatically does it for you. It how, cool is that? how cool is that? You don't have to beat your heart, you beat your heart either. either. It automatically it does that. Does how cool is that? Cool is that? <laughs> anyways, 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 now that we're back, now that we're back, now that we're back we'll begin the process, we'll begin of, the process creation. of creation. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to stay connected to this dream avatar, this dream self, and we're going to paint this entity onto the mask or canvas or whatever material you have. On the table over here, we have some art supplies. Feel free to take um, whatever your intuition calls you to. There's no right way to do this. We simply invite you to um, create whatever feels right in the moment. Um, and this will be a symbolic representation of an unconscious part of your mind, of this dream character. The imagination is such an important thing. Um, it's something that we lose touch with because society teaches us that imagination is only for children. So gradually, as we get older, we unlearn the great ability that we naturally have. I mean, we, we all dream at night whether or not we remember it. And the dreams are incredibly beautiful and creative. We're all the incredible artists at our core. The fact that we have the capacity to dream up these landscapes, these worlds. And so in this process of connecting with the imaginal realm, the imagination, the psyche, the unconscious, the dream world, we're reconnecting to this childlike wonder that I believe is closer to the core of reality, the core of consciousness. A lot of great philosophers and mystics over centuries have talked about how imagination is not just something in the head, it's actually the ground of reality itself. Everything we experience is in the mind. We don't experience anything outside of the mind. Just like the tables and chairs we see, the trees, the clouds. Our imaginary figures are in the same world, the same realm. They're just as real. So begin to paint or draw or create. And with each stroke of creation, Feel the connection to your unconscious, to the creative realm, to the imaginal realm.
significance of the act of creation itself in itself you're creating life you are a divine creator you are a divine creator none of this would exist without you none of this could exist without you you are a divine creator The very act of creation, we take a dive into the imaginal, into the unconscious, to reunite the darkness with the light, to reunite the darkness with the light, to bring the yin and the yang back together, to bring the heart and the mind back together, individuation, wholeness, unity. You are love. You are love. The act of creation is love. 
with each stroke of the brush, the brush, with each movement of the marker or the pen, or the pen. You're creating love. You're, creating love. You're turning your fears, your fears, your desires, desires, your unconscious contents into something beautiful, beautiful, metamorphizing, metamorphizing the shadows in your mind. Gardening the shadows, allowing them to bloom in the light of consciousness.
Amazing. Amazing. All right. So now we're going to take this um, next step. We started by journeying into the depths of our unconscious, our dream realm, the imaginal realm. We found our dream avatar, our dream self. We brought them back with us from the unconscious into consciousness, bringing the darkness into the light, liberating the repressed aspects of ourself, and accessing that through the act of creativity, through creation and imagination. And now, whenever you're ready, you can wear the mask. Um, and this wearing of the mask will signify a unification <laughs> between the different parts of yourself, the part of yourself that was once resigned to lurk and live in the shadows, and now, look at that, amazing. The formless became form. Such a beautiful process out of nothing becomes something, and that's how this all happened in the first place. This planet, this life, this world, it all came out of nothing. Our thoughts come out of nothing. Our creations come out of nothing. Um, it's so incredibly beautiful. Subatomic particles popping in and out of existence. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you wear this mask, you know, feel connected to your heart, feel connected to your dream self, your dream avatar, and just notice how that feels to be with this part of yourself that you normally don't allow yourself to be with. Maybe you want to dance around with it, maybe you want to sing with it, whatever your intuition calls you towards. Um, we invite you to take that step. I know if you're tuning in live um, from home, you're not gonna have a mask and that's okay. Instead, you can take your creation, you can put it near your face if you'd like, or you can put it onto your heart. And this will symbolize the reunion, the integration uh, between your unconscious and your consciousness. Um, you could feel your heart beating against your creation. Feel the creativity of the heart itself merging with the creativity of the mind such a beautiful process. How divine. And in a few moments, we're going to begin our interview with our fabulous artist, Victory. They're right here on the chair, uh, painting this beautiful work of art, this beautiful spiritual divine piece, this portal into infinity, into eternity. Um, so yeah, momentarily we'll be asking some questions whenever they feel that they're ready to begin. We'll begin with that. So you all can just take a few moments to connect with your creation as we set up the interview. But yeah, for those, for those that have to leave, um, thank you so much for participating in this event. Thank yourself, first of all, for allowing yourself the vulnerability, the courage to be with your unconscious. It's a difficult thing to do. Even to sit in meditation for a long period of time is a difficult thing to do. So hug yourself, give yourself some love, some good loving, you know, some self-love, gratitude for the body, for the mind, for the journey that you went on. And just know that you can do this anytime you want uh, and at your home. You can access the imagination wherever you are, in whatever circumstance you're in. And the imagination is incredibly powerful. It connects us to the deep reservoirs, the jewels in our consciousness. Um, and it gives you the potential to truly heal and transform. Um, so yeah, you can take that with you wherever you go. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are beautiful, you are divine.
And yeah, uh, are you ready uh, for, for some questions? <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. So if you all want to see um, the creation, the divine creation right here, the reflection, um, we have the mask right here. Yeah, the camera's right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it closer. If intermission as we all connect together and come together. Group picture with our mask. I guess we can do it here. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, yeah, I'll take the picture. I'll go, I'll go. So, um, yeah, now we're going to start the interview with Victory. Um, so, I think I take it over here. <laughs> you want to start? I do the video interview. All right, all right. I feel like I'm right now. Go for it. Hello, Victory. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I knew it when I met you. I was like, I, was like, I, I want, want to bring you a part of something I'm working on. And I'm happy. Happy, happy, happy. Join us for our beautiful, beautiful Dream Labs. Dream Labs. Thank you, Nico, for such a beautiful guy. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you. I had a very um, 
uh, transformative experience meditating through painting and the two work very well together sonically I had a very good time listening to that it was really interesting I really enjoyed it um, and I think we need more programming like this where we showcase different types of soundscapes through meditation or maybe through some sort of theme so I'm very grateful to be on. Thank you. Do you want to share a little bit about your artistic practice, about who you are? Because I know you work on multiple forms of art, you know, from DJing, to fire dancing, to painting, all over the place. Yeah, so I consider myself a uh, multidisciplinary artist. I've been using a different term lately where it's transdisciplinary because I like to combine two different facets of two artistic uh, factors and make something new. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a transformative experience. And I've been um, artistic most of my life. I've just been involved in music and art since I was a kid. And um, very, very um, devoted specifically to the classics. And then as, as, as I got older, I got very, very involved in electronic music, and now um, I'm also just very into this type of sound healing. I like all sorts of music, so it's very, it's very good to test my boundaries when it comes to different types of sounds. And um, yeah, I really just enjoy t testing my, my form of enjoying sounds, because that's what makes a good musician, a good DJ, a good even producer is allowing yourself to test yourself sonically. So yeah, that's what I'm, I'm on. I'm just a very, um, I guess, transdisciplinary individual. I can't really um, pinpoint what made it that way. I just really like dif trying different things. So um, yeah, and painting was something that I did when I was a kid as well. So it's good to be able to just let that out, you know, because there's always an artist inside of everybody. And um, these spaces are very important for that. So I think, I think, I think, I think growing through your, your being a transplant artist, artist, what do you what feel do you inspires you, inspire you to, to create, create all these art, 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 art? Oh my God, that's a great question. I think, um, I feel like I'm just a really sensitive person. And I think we need to celebrate sensitivity in this, in this society, in this culture, because it makes, sensitivity makes great artists, sensitivity makes great leaders, sensitivity, sensitivity makes great thought, thoughts, actions. And so um, I think my inspiration comes from my life experiences as well as other artists that I see um, and how they take a certain experience in their life and they make it into an art, whether that be a sound or an installation, or even like a feeling that you get when you see something. So inspiration for me comes everywhere. Um, but mostly, as of recently, it's been coming from <laughs> a lot of YouTube videos. Um, I really like watching visuals and music videos and seeing how artists direct or produce their projects. It's very interesting to see how people look at things sonically, auditorily, versus how they look at things visually. And I like to find the intersection of those two dichotomies. And then from there, I really like to perceive what it is that goes through that person's head. So I like to like get into it psychologically. Um, and that's why I feel like I am drawn to sensitive artists and sensitive topics, because you become so vulnerable that you let everything out and you're just this raw bear artist and to me that's fascinating to see that side of a person you know what i mean yeah so i actually had a question about this piece right here um i was wondering if you could talk a bit about it and you know the process of creating that um kind of the what it means to you i guess uh, so, when I was, let me prop this up, <laughs> when I was painting, as I was listening to the sound healing go on, I 
immediately was very drawn to the theme of water. But as I progressed, I started to kind of feel like, what if we had an ocean in space? And for me, I think um, it's inspired by liminal spaces and like almost the bareness and the thoughtlessness that liminal spaces contain. I'm also like a huge astronomy fanatic, so I really like to create <laughs> I really like to create landscapes, specifically out in space, things that give almost like this illusion of being suspended in time. Um, I've had a lot of dreams of like liminal spaces or being suspended in time with a certain individual, and I always find myself attracted to painting bodies or even eyes, but this time around I kind of just left like, I guess you could call it a moon. Um, or a planet, whatever you want. I was thinking of giving it rings, but I kind of just wanted it to be like a little thoughtless form. And to me, it kind of looks like the planet Neptune. And Neptune gives very sensitive, um, deep vibes, um, almost like it very, it, it's like the planet of tapping into the unconsciousness, tapping, tapping into those liminal spaces. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just like playing around with the colors. This is, I guess, my first time um, messing around with a black canvas, which is a good challenge for me because usually, typically, I just play around with white canvases. Um, so I was thinking, what color palette should I play with? And I just stuck really with the blues and the purples and maybe some whites. Um, um, and I, I, I guess those are like the typical color palette for my, a lot of my art. If you see my art, it's very, especially with paintings, very purple, blues pinks and um, deep royal colors that are moody and, um, you know, just like make you think, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just kind of went with the flow. Um, most of it is just going with the flow. I really don't really, I truly don't feel this has like a certain purpose or um, like story. I guess you could just say it's like a landscape that I saw in my head that I needed to put onto a painting. And um, I feel like that happens a lot for me. I see things and then I just need to put it on paper or into a painting. Um, so yeah, I mean, just felt like I was floating in time when I was listening to you both. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah thank you so much for sharing. Um, Would you I, show your mask as well? as well? Yeah, I was just gonna ask yeah. that. <laughs> oh, my mask, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the mask, so I have it painted here. I decided to do it like a two-part I guess mask type, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a dichotomy of sorts, like where um, there's one half that's different than the other, but they both kind of uh, fall into the same spectrum. We have like obviously the same purple and pink and blue color palette that I'm like using in my painting here, but I decided to just keep it white, um, save the paint and maybe splatter on some gold ink. Um, yeah, it's just like, to me, it just represents like the two sides of me, like um, very creative, intuitive individual, very deep. And then like maybe perhaps there's this person that gets tapped in when you're dreaming and that's that creative side maybe. And then the, during your daytime, your day life, whatever you want to call it, your conscious life, you're like almost a structured human being. And so I kept it white, kind of like um, a very, uh, uh, rule coded individual, but still trying to, you know, peek out of its like normal day to day and just tap into that creativity. Um, I don't know. I just like wanted to to do a white and then the color. I was just feeling the color purple and blue and yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's sublime. Thank you so much Thank for for sharing. Uh, Thank you. I think it fits it's quite nicely, nicely with, with the, 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 the canvas, canvas as well. well. Yeah, I tried to keep the colors similar. I'm a fan of purple. Purple is the best. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, it just reminds me of my dream life. Like, if I had a dreamscape, I would want it to be like fluffy white clouds that kind of look like the ocean, and I'm just like in stargazing and yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that was actually gonna be my next question. Was gonna ask you about um, your relationship with dreaming. Uh, what dreams mean to you? What the dream space? means to you if you've done any healing work with dreams um, and then also like more about how that connects to your artistic practice yes of course so um, within my practice I, I guess you could say spiritual practice 
Um, so I am a Reiki master. So within that, there has been a lot of, um, I guess, healing that I do um, with clients specifically where I do distance Reiki. And I specifically send it to them during a time where they're sleeping. So the Reiki invigorates their body in a way that can be healing and restful for them. And a lot of them have claimed to me that they've experienced some transformative dreams. Um, so Reiki is a very powerful form of energy healing. Um, and I feel like that can also be very effective for those of us who are um, needing some sort of like grounding for our bodies. But uh, I also have experienced a lot of dreams in my personal life. Um, just through the work I do as like a tarot reader and as just a painter, um, I feel like also tapping into my musicianship has also allowed me to tap into my dreams more. I get a lot of inspiration from my dreams. Sometimes I hear songs in my dreams and um, I'll wake up and I'll have to like write down my dreams. Um, a lot of the dreams that I've experienced have been like tapping into these certain realities. Um, and I've even been able to see um, past loved ones in my dreams and like have like almost like experiences where like I sit with them and like I'm very much um, comforted by their presence and it feels very real and I don't doubt, you know, that it could be. Um, I just um, know that sometimes like these dreams can be representative of the emotions that we carry deep inside like in our waking life that we're not really addressing. And during that specific time, I know I was going through a lot of grief. So I accept that dreams can also be a representation of what we're experiencing in our waking life. Um, I have a lot of dreams of my teeth falling. <laughs> I hate that one. That one always freaks me out. Um, like, all my teeth fall out, and I just, I'm like, accepting it. I'm like, okay, whatever. My teeth have fallen out. And then I wake up, and I'm like, oh. Oh. So um, dreams can be stressful. So I know that, like, sometimes I'll get dreams about um, uh, future events. <laughs> I've had dreams that have actually been a little, pr been predictive, and it's kind of a little freaky. And, you know, we could talk about that a little bit more, but, you know, I do believe that those things are also possible for a lot of us who are very intuitively in, in tune with ourselves. And so, yeah, dreams, um, dreams are different for every individual. I, I know that I use them as a guiding post for a lot of the things that I experience emotion-wise. They show me what my emotions are that I'm not really addressing. So um, that's why I like to do dream journals. They're very... Um, informative, they help you kind of process out everything that you're experiencing in your waking life, even in your sleeping life, whatever it be. Absolutely. But, yeah. Can you expand, Can you expand a little bit on like, like, what your, 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 your dream journal dream process? process. How's it, how's it look like? like? So my dream journal, it used to be a virtual journal because I, I needed something that I could just do immediately and like unfortunately I was very like attached to my phone, but now I have an actual journal where I'll go on and I'll just write immediately. If I can remember the dream, I wake up, I'm like, oh man, this is a weird dream, I need to write it down. Because it just feels special. Like I tap into this intuitive like part of myself where I'm just like, this kind of feels a little bit more different. It could be a message that needs to be decoded. Mm -hmm. And with that, I've learned how to decode certain things like objects, locations. I had a dream one time. I love that we're talking about this. I had a dream one time, it was recently, where um, my, pa my cat that passed away recently, about a year ago, he like, appeared to me in that dream. And in this dream, this cat, like I was holding him in my arms like a baby, just like I had always done. And then one time we go in the dream world, where, where, wherever it may be, wherever you may call it, we're like outside and it's dark and it's like a full moon. And then my cat starts howling at the moon like a wolf. And that to me was very indicative of like a lot of things that I was experiencing in my waking life. Um, I connect deeply with the wolf. I feel like it is a very positive, spiritual um, animal for myself, my path. Um, and the cat was just appearing to me just as a way to like say hello and be like, okay, I believe psychically that my past loved ones appear in dreams because they're telling me that they're, they're okay, they're doing fine. They want me to be accepting of this grief. So it was a very interesting dream. But um, the dream journal, going back to that, I write down everything that I experience and that I see so I can decode it later. Um, there's just a lot of references. I have a book. You can also do it online. Um, and then you just write down what happened in the dream. Who, what, where, why? Like a little narrative. You write down in your own words. And writing it down helps you remember it. And it also helps you kind of like see it physically so that you can be like, okay, maybe this is what 
is happening here. Maybe this is the story. Um, and that's really how I keep my dream journal, so I can like decode narratives at a later time. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like, of work. Like, like, every day, or do you like, only like, when you have impactful have dreams? dreams? Only when I have impactful dreams. Um, but if you, I do recommend if you want to practice uh, dream interpretation, that you do it every day. It's especially if you do dream every day, because not everybody dreams every day, um, or every night, excuse me. So um, if you do dream, you can go ahead and do a dream journal the following morning or whenever you wake up. Uh, and if you want to dream more, um, there have been lots of folk tales, folk tale recipes of herbs that you could use, right? So there's like the um, dream lotus. That's a flower, a very potent flower that you could use as a tea that helps you lucid dream, helps you remember your dreams. I also believe rose and lavender are very powerful allies when you pair those two. So you can get some um, herbal tea to help you with that um, if you don't dream often. But Actually, that's just a fun fact. <laughs> I have right here a lucid dreaming potion. Amazing. Uh, and this is a gift for you. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's so uh, sweet. So it has mugwort, witch hazel, blue lotus, a bunch of other sacred uh, plant medicines that um, assist with lucid dreaming. That's amazing. Thank you. What a yeah. sweet gift. I love it. I, I love it. I love herbs. Anything natural whenever someone gives me that so special and it's so great so, thank yeah, you, you can, all you can put you can drop that into like tea or awesome you know, whatever or you could just take it on its own yeah it's pretty bitter but, that's uh, okay <laughs> i've got mugwort so of course you yeah. know the most bitter uh herb they say it comes from the bible it's called um wormwood oh yeah and one time when i was in peru i got altitude sickness so bad that they made me take fresh wormwood from the garden and like make it into a poultice and then drop it into my tea and i drank that and in 20 minutes i was in the bathroom <laughs> no i had cleansed my gut in like 20 minutes so bitter herbs i'm not afraid of them okay i'm, I'm good i have go. got it and honestly this is um paired with other really good herbs too so it shouldn't be too bad um, but I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Of course. What a beautiful gift. And I appreciate you all having me here. That's another lovely yeah. gift. I think I would want to expand more into give you a talk to talk about, about the subconscious mind and other characters that we create. Do you feel like this other character that you were painting have any kind of emotional significance to you or any kind of way you would describe their characteristics? So I have this emotional character that I go into dreamscape world. That's what I call it, my dreamscape world. Um, and, and whether this be when I'm asleep or even when I'm daydreaming, I'm a Pisces Venus, so I, dra I daydream a lot. Mm -hmm. I daydream a lot. So my dreamscape world has this person that's kind of like my alter ego. Mm -hmm. And they're a very beautiful, captivating, fantastical energy, um, but like elevated. And I feel like they have two dichotomies to them. They have a very deep, intuitive, creative, per personal side to them. And then there's a more serious side that's like a go-getter that really um, plans things out strategically and like is the one who is goal-oriented, right? And so I've learned that those two sides do exist in my waking life, but I have a tendency to daydream a lot and then I just like stick to certain things and certain characteristics in my daydream world and so I guess like with the mask I was painting two sides that I see often times when I'm like making decisions or like throughout the course of my life experiences and so it does connect with me personally I think it's a part of me that I tune into when I really do need it you know when I need to push myself I need to make myself um, stand out and I need make myself just really get out a project that's inspiring me. And then there's that calculated, strategic, quiet side. And um, I feel like I play um, hopscotch, I guess you could say, with both sides. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, like, it's a personal facet of myself. I don't really, um, I don't really let other people see certain parts of myself unless it's through my art, you know? So... I would say it is personal for sure, you know? Yeah, so. that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I guess uh, one last question that I had, at least maybe you have more. Yeah, keep on but um, I'm wondering about your relationship between dreaming and healing. Have you had any dreams that you felt have had like profound significance on your life um, in, in any sort of way, you know, with regards to healing or personal growth? 
Okay, so. If you feel comfortable sharing. No, it's a very profound question. I like that question. Um, I guess there was this one dream that happened um, a while back when I was um, living in North Carolina. And I had dreamt of a past an individual in my life who had passed away. And this person came to me. And um, it was a very calm dream. I felt like he was right there beside me. It didn't feel any different from waking life, and that's how I knew it was a visitation, mm. right? So um, that dream felt too real to me. And then when I woke up, I was like, oh my goodness, they're not here. That's right, they're, they're, they're no longer here with me anymore. And you know, grappling with grief and through all those emotions after you lose someone so close to you, um, you, you start to think a lot about your life and your choices and your priorities and like what you want to do. And I, f I feel like after seeing this person and what they said to me was very profound and um, very just like a three word sentence, very short to the point. And it w really was what I needed to hear in that moment. And so after that, I started to do more risk taking in my artistic endeavors. I um, taught myself how to DJ, I taught myself how to produce. And I decided to move back to South Florida and pursue more um, of a musical career here. And I don't think it would have been as influential had I not dreamed of that person. Because I don't know what it was, but my mind needed to see them, whether it was like in person, which it was not possible anymore, or through a dream. And um, it's just very peculiar to me because, you know, when you're a spiritual person and you have a spiritual practice, those dreams feel very mm. uh, mystical. They just don't feel like, they, they seem like something very out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, and so um, I started going very in depth about who I am as a person, what I want. And it was a very impactful dream, I will say. I needed, I needed it. And um, I have often visitation dreams from people in my life who pass away. Um, which is very common when you're like very like just intuitive or psychically in tune and so you know and anybody can really just do that it's just a matter of practicing yeah absolutely yeah. thank you so much for sharing that and, yeah um, yeah it sounds incredibly profound and powerful um, and the relationship that you have with dreams like the fact that you're able to experience them so deeply and be so intuitive about it um, that's beautiful so I appreciate thank you thank sharing you. that yeah. I think I'd like to explore, explore a little, little more. more. So if that. Yeah. Started 45 minutes later. Yeah. So we yeah. Have we're, we're good. We have like 15 minutes probably. Yeah. yeah. We can. We, we, we need to keep on. We're vibing. Yeah. Yeah. Come come on. On. We're just. We're just having a conversation with the, the camera yeah. watching. Watch. 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 Hello, the audience. Hey, everyone. Yeah. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone's watching uh, here from home, you know, we feel you in our hearts, um, and we hope that. This is leading you to some reflections about your own dreaming life and maybe some ideas about how to uh, incorporate more dream healing into your life or dreams of creativity or artistry. So, but yeah, thank you for, for being here with us. We appreciate you all. I think I'll put like, like if anybody is watching, watching the stream and would, and would like to like, you know, make, make a comment. comment. Or ask, or ask a question, a question, question you, can you can shoot me a DM directly to Rizobo. It's R H I Z O B O on Instagram. And we'll read it and check it out. Yeah, same with me. If uh, you have a question for me, you can do it. Uh, DM me the shadow underscore gardener on Instagram, or you can even text me if you, if you have my number. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but back, to, back the to the question, question. so, so you, you had, had mentioned something about your, 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 in 2017, I was doing an internship in Cusco, Peru. And I was um, basically doing an ethnography internship, learning from the Quero tribe 
the tribesmen who were um, in partnership with the hostel where I was staying at. And I was volunteering. I was doing Reiki for the community members. And through there, I learned a lot about the, um, I guess, the spiritual aspect of um, ancient Andean um, practices. And in, in their practices, they talk a lot about the dream world. They, it, within shamanism, whether it be Eastern shamanism or even Native American shamanism, they talk a lot about there being some sort of a dreamscape, right? A dream world that the shaman, the healer, can access through lots of trials and lots of practices. And so, um, essentially, what happens is that the healer knows that they are chosen for this specific task of becoming the healer, becoming the shaman for their culture, because they have a lot of ailments, or they have a lot of, um, I guess, unfortunate things happening in their life that keep happening until they take a certain path towards healing. And um, that was a very, very um, poignant fact for me in which I was discovering as I got older, the more I was distancing, distancing myself from my spiritual practice, the more mal, malaise, or unfortunate events would occur in my life. And so um, I felt like I was always psychically in tune as a child. I had a lot of spiritual experiences growing up. I was very, very connected to um, praying and cleansing and, and all these spiritual practices, even such as at, at such a young age, I didn't really even have the words for it. And as I got older, a lot of what I learned was folktale medicine or shamanism, or indigenous healing practices. And so I really got to tap into um, my native healing practices. And that was a very special thing for me. Um, and I'm very, very much connected to that side of myself. So um, I was able to get initiated in um, the Monaiki rites, which is an Andean set of rites that uh, are for indigenous healers, specifically femmes, women. And so I have the seven rites and I'm able to facilitate circles. And so through that, I've been able to serve um, indigenous medicine cacao. A lot of us know, us, know it as cacao. It's just like a really dark, bitter bean that you can make into a drink. It's very heart healing. Um, and through that, I pair it with the Reiki. And um, a lot of it has just been very eye-opening. And so the psychicness, I guess, just the practice goes hand in hand. The spiritual aspects are just, I, I practice a lot of um, um, things with medicine, plant, plant medicine, with herbs. That's my specialty. I do a lot of self-study. I'm not going to call myself a certified herbalist because I'm not. Um, and props to those who are because they bring a lot of healing to our communities. But um, I do a lot of work with candles, with herbs, with tarot. I've been practicing tarot for years. And that was just like a thing that fell into my lap as well. And so all of these things are just part of my practice. And um, I implement them every month in cycles with the moon. I do rituals. I do my bath. My, my sacred baths, I have, we have a family recipe that I use, and you know, I, I used to have a garden where I would collect herbs, but right now I'm transitioning homes um, currently with family after like moving for a lot of these past few years. And so I'm um, trying to create more um, balance with the planets, with the land in my life, and so I really like to be out in nature. And, you know, it's just like um, native indigenous practices that we just have to connect with our cultures and see what's important for me that's um, connecting with the land, being next to water, being with the plants, being with animals, um, um, and connecting with our fellow humans in ways that are wholesome and uh, loving. So yeah, long answer, I know, but it's a, I feel like a, spiritual practices are very, you know, endearing and near to someone, so I wanted to give a thoughtful answer. No, it's much, much appreciated. I'm wondering, this thought just came into my head because you're talking about the Andean um, shamanistic practices. Mm -hmm. and that was really eye-opening to me. I haven't heard much about those specific practices. It's really cool to hear. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting for me about the connection between different practices across time and history. And I'm wondering how you feel about the dichotomy between the ancient practices and then kind of newer practices. Do you see a bridge between them? 
Um, do you think it's important to hold on to these old traditions? Um, and then how do you see that fitting in with sort of progressing into newer traditions or you know how people try to make their own version of spirituality? And yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts uh, on that yeah, subject. Of course, that's a great question. And I, I feel like when it comes to these native indigenous practices, we really have to connect with our elders and connect with those who know the practices and grew up with the practices. Um, and through these practices, I've learned that it's really important to learn about the history, learn about the cultures, and give thanks not only to the land, but to the people who continue to bring these practices, practices to new hands and new minds. And I know a lot of plant medicine spaces have this issue where they um, have untrained facilitators or people who have done medicine um, circles for not too long and all of a sudden they're in these facilitator roles and you know these plant medicines are very sacred. They have minds of their own. They really have spirits of their own. And so you know it just becomes very tricky when someone wants to be of service to the plants and wants to serve but you know, they're not within the culture, they're not within the practice, and I think it's very important, like you know, you could, you could really go all the way to the freaking jungle of Colombia, and you can find a curandero who will teach you this stuff, but you know, you have to be very serious. These practices, they ask you to drink these plant medicines every single day, several times a day, and so it has, it has to be very much a lifestyle decision that you take, and so a lot of people aren't really ready for that, and I've noticed, you know, mm. but that's okay, but you know, you, that's your decision. You're still allowed to make the decision to take the medicine if you want to, just make sure that you reference and you do research and you find someone who is prepared and who is knowledgeable and who has been doing this and this is like why I always recommend going to the motherland as I call it going to the actual countries where you want to experience the medicine so if you want to do mushrooms go to Mexico if you want to do ayahuasca go to Peru or go to Colombia and like you'll experience peyote you can go to um, even some parts of Mexico as well or Arizona you know there's a lot of tribes that do these things mm -hmm. and you would support these indigenous places but and people but Ultimately, that really just depends on like their practices and if they want to offer that. And it has become a market. It has become a tourist scheme. And you know that's just another way that gentrification is affecting the plant medicine spaces. But that's obviously another discussion. Um, I, I like to do these ceremonies intentionally, which is why I stick with cacao, because cacao is indigenous to my culture, my native indigenous um, Colombian um, indigeneity that's because you know I have indigeneity within Colombia and there's indigenous tribes there and I'm, I'm part of that but here in Native America we have other types of medicines and I really don't really like to mess with those unless I'm you know in a student role um, and there's a facilitator who has experience before me but um, cacao I've, I have a, a personal recipe and I share circles with people who are very dear and near to who people who I trust but um, you know, it's very, it's a big responsibility to hold circles like that to the public, especially with strangers, people you don't know. Um, and I, I just encourage people to be responsible and know who is within their energy, within that field, within that group, if they're serving medicine, and just, just you know, be intentional because um, these uh, plant medicines really do affect people in a wide range of aspects, and they definitely need integration, so... But yeah, that's... Thank you so much. I mean, that, that was really informative. I think you brought up some really important points there. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's like about, you need to have a reverence, I yeah. think, for it. You know, Absolutely. in respect. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, for doctors, we're not going <clears> to <throat> go to a doctor who doesn't, who hasn't gone through that rigorous training. And yet, with, in a spiritual community, a lot of times uh, you don't see that because there's not right. as much cohesion. And, and, you know, you don't want to gatekeep as well. Yeah. And that's why I encourage people to do their research. Like, if you want to connect with a certain plant or a certain substance, I call them plants, you know, they're, they're plants. Um, it's always good to just make a relationship with the spirit of the plant. Sit with it, journal with it, breathe it, meditate with it, you know, whether it be mugwort, whether it be psilocybin, sit with that and get to know the spirit Absolutely. and learn about it. And through that, you can learn about your... Um, conscious reality and even if you make that practice into your dream world and you like imp implement that practice into your dream world it, it can really help open up a lot of spaces for you and um, 
help you um, just like uncover different parts of yourself that you're not really cognizant of right now, you know? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to ask? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should close the ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for that interview. It was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. That was wonderful. Um, do you want to do like close it off? Just, just, just little closing words, and then we just make some music for the next five minutes. Yeah. You want to give some closing words? Closing, closing words. words. Yeah. Oh, so, so. How do I feel, do I feel right, now? right now? How do you feel? Content. Content. Mm. Content. I feel quite happy. I enjoyed our interview together. That was like, like very informative. I enjoy, I enjoy the piece the that you have made. made. It feels, feels like, 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 like captured the energy that I was hoping to bring to this space. I'm glad. And I feel like you have embodied my vision for this episode. Amazing. It makes me so happy to hear that. Yay. <laughs> uh, you've, been, you've been a perfect, uh, I, 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 not, I can't even say guest because you're more than a guest. I mean, you're an essential part of this whole Aww. process. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's. Yeah, we appreciate the that. Magic, so the magic created tonight was intentional. Yeah. It was great. I had a fun time with and, you all uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, personally, I, like, I would definitely love working with you in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could do yeah amazing. Really cool yeah. Enjoy, Sounds enjoy great. more of these uh, uh, crazy little uh, ceremonies. Yeah, I guess also, like, what I just thought of now is if anyone watching uh, live wants to find out more about your practice or how they can, you know, maybe, like, uh, support you in any way mm -hmm. how can they find out about that so you can find me on instagram and tiktok at flowing frequency um and if you would like to book a dj a fire performer or a live painting on um, a live artist i am more than happy to take a booking um support me by booking me support me by sharing my events coming to events and um also just giving back to the scene which is cool. super important and the best way for them to reach you is through Instagram? Yeah, through Instagram. And you'll find my email tab there if you need to hit me up through email. <laughs> cool. Amazing. Well, 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 I guess a little recap, recap of this episode, this episode for everyone, everyone watching at home. home. So, so we, we delved, delved deeper, deeper into, into our unconscious world, world and found, found the hidden character of our dream self and, and built a material way to kind of showcase that. that. Through, through various, various masks, masks and, and mediums. mediums. Yeah, yeah. So, so next, next episode, episode, I think, I think we're, we're gonna, gonna, gonna bring that bring dream, that dream version, version to life. life. Mm. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, yeah. We started with just opening the dream space in general, and then that was part one. Part two, we actually bridged the gap between consciousness and the unconscious mind through the imaginal realm and the process of creation, um, artwork, um, so like liberating the dream self, the dream character, and then in part three, perhaps we'll embody the dream character and really integrate them into our conscious self, and so we can we can heal ourselves from that and be more unified uh, with our full potential as spiritual beings. So next episode, August 18th, 8 p.m. Right, right, right. Yep. So feel free to stream online or come and join us in person. You gotta be able to, like this episode, there will be some wacky things to join in on. So I highly recommend coming in person. Thank you so much for, for tuning in, for opening your hearts, your mind, your souls. It's truly an honor. We love you. You are love. We are love. Uh, we're gonna close the episode out with a little bit of music. Um, Hope you all have a beautiful night. Hope you all have some beautiful dreams. Uh, yeah, enjoy your dreams tonight. <laughs> if you have a full conversation now, now with that, that, that dream, dream self. self. Oh, you're, oh, you're, you're more than, more than, than welcome, welcome to sing. sing. Yeah, play any instruments you want, sing. You, are, you can you most can definitely play the harmonica. Sing and play? 
That's you. That's you. This is Dream Lab's outro.
at Dream Lab. We thank you so much for being here. We love you. You are love. You are love. Have a splendiferous night. <laughs>